today I'm going to show you how you can use webhooks to send messages to Discord channels from your Minecraft server. This can be super useful for staff notifications for example, or logging events, or anything else you want to track outside the game. But before we dive into that, we're going to look at what webhooks actually are. You can think of webhooks as a reversed REST API, with better performance than the traditional way when it comes to live data gathering. And the components included in this are an app that needs data and a server that provides the data. The app in this case is Discord, and let's first look at the traditional way. As I already said, the app that needs the data is Discord, and the server that provides the data in this context is your Minecraft server. And the way that it works in the traditional way is that anytime the app needs new data, it asks the server for any updates. And to make that seem as live as possible without any delays, the request for updates gets sent in a certain interval, for example, one second. And you can imagine this creates an unnecessary overhead and especially with multiple connections to check this could decrease performance severely. With webhooks on the other hand, the roles are reversed. Now the server is responsible for sending the updates to the app. This is done via a HTTP POST request to a webhook URL created by the app and we can simulate that by using a REST client like Postman for example. And now as you can see I have Discord open in the back here and here's the REST client. So let's paste the webhook URL in here and send over some JSON data. For example now we're just going to send a regular message. So create a content field and inside that type your message. And then when you click send, this message instantly shows up on Discord. And if you try that multiple times, you can see it is very simple to use this to send messages to Discord. And this is the principle sending HTTP requests that we're going to use in our plugin, but with a bit more configuration options. So you can actually send embedded messages like you can see up here and changing the display name of the bot. The first thing we're going to create is a new class and this class acts as a model class. It represents the payload that we can send to the webhook. So let's call it webhook payload. And as you saw before, when we manually executed the webhook, we sent over a field called content and this represented the content of the actual message. And what we're going to do now is inside this class, we're going to create all the fields that we want to provide to the webhook. To make that work, the fields must have the same name as the value that Discord expects for them. If you look at the documentation, you can see here, those are the fields that can work with the webhook. And here's our content field that is of type string. And we're going to add a few others like username and and the embeds private string content. Then let's also add the username. And we also want to allow embeds in our message. Since embeds are not natively supported in Java, we need to create our own custom class for that. So we can do that inside here, static class embed. And then in here, we need to define all the fields that an embed needs. And those would be, for example, a string title, a string description and and then a list of fields those are natively supported by java as well so we need to create a custom class for those two and then it also expects an author which is also a custom class then let's continue with the field as you can see on the documentation fields are just subtitles with additional content in the embedded message static class field and the two values are called name and the other one is called value then we also need an author as you can see here and the author just has one field with the name of the author. So static class author and private string name. Then we can create a method to obtain an author object as well. So public static author of string name and then make that final. And let's use Lombok, cried arc constructor, to create a new constructor for that. This annotation will now create a constructor that expects a name field so that we can call new author and name. And we need to return that here. And if you want, you can also make this constructor private by doing access is equal to access level dot private. For the field embed and webhook payload, we're going to use something else. We're going to use the Add builder annotation from Lombok for all three of those classes. So add builder here and add builder here. And we do add builder here and not in the author class because as you can see, the other classes with the builder annotation have multiple fields instead of just one in the author. And with the builder annotation, it is easier to create objects when they need multiple values. And then we can create a new class to actually send the model that we just created. And I'm going to call that Discord. And in here, we just have a single method called send message and it accepts a webhook payload 
which we call payload. And now it is time to actually create the webhook in Discord. So for that, go to any channel, click on the edit channel button and integrations, then webhooks and new webhook. Then click on the newly created webhook and copy the webhook URL. Then go back to IntelliJ and create a static variable for that. Let's call it web hook URL and this is equal to our URL. And for the send message method, we will use the HTTP client from Java. So this only works on Java 11 and up. And we need to create a try catch block for that and declare the variable inside the resources block of the try catch block. So final HTTP client client is equal to HTTP client dot new HTTP client. And now if you remember from the rest client, we specify the content as JSON. And now we need to convert this payload class to a JSON string. You can do that with the included JSON library from Google. Now let's get an instance of that with private static final JSON. JSON is equal to new JSON builder dot create. And you can also do dot set pretty printing, which formats the JSON string, but this is optional. And then to convert the payload to JSON, we simply do JSON dot to JSON and pass payload. And now we save that in a variable final string JSON is equal to this. And now we just use the client and create a request for it as we have done in the past before. So final HTTP request request is equal to HTTP request dot new builder. Then we pass the URL with dot URI and do URI dot create and pass our webhook URL from up here. Then for the next step, we need to add some headers to tell that the request is in JSON format. And for that, we do dot header, then content type. You can see it already auto completes. And the content type is application slash JSON. Then we need to set the type of the HTTP request, which is post. And then we need to add the actual JSON payload with body publishers dot of string and pass JSON. If you want, you can also print the JSON and then to actually send the message, we're going to use a completable future again to make this asynchronous and thus better for the performance of the server. Let's do client.send async, pass our request and then specify that we want to get the request as a string with body handlers dot of string. Then save that into a variable, maybe give it a different name, future. And then if you want to execute some code when the response has been sent, you can do future dot then accept, which returns the response. And then you can print the response code, for example, with response dot status code. And this is already it for the plugin. Now we just need to use the builders to create a payload and then pass it to the send message method. We can do that in the on enable method, for example. And first I'm going to create a webhook payload object. I call it payload. And this is equal to payload dot builder. And now we can set the fields with dot content. Here we can specify our message content, message content, for example. You can set the username with this method. And you can also, of course, provide embeds. But I see we forgot to create the methods for that. So go back to the payload and in the webhook payload class, create a new variable, which is a new list of embed and call it embeds. And because of the add builder annotation, we can now call the embeds method. And here we can provide our embeds variable, which we need to create first. And you can see this is a list of embeds that we need to create. So final list embed embeds is a list of embed.builder.build. And then just as with a payload object, we can create our embed. We can give it a title, for example, of embed title. We can add a description and we can also add custom fields, which is a list again. So list.of and this time we're going to use the field builder. And in this example, I just create one field with the name of field one and a value of this is a very important message. And now if you have created your embeds and your payload, you can use discord.send message and pass the payload. And this sends this message directly to your Discord server. And now you can see when the server started, the message is sent with our embedded message and for debugging purposes we also have the json string here. 